This lesson is to teach how to solve a dihybrid genetics cross uh, for Mendelian traits. These traits are ones that are dominant or recessive. We're going to use an example that uh, Gregor Mendel might have used. Remember for his pea plants, tall was dominant over short and yellow seeds were dominant over green seeds. So imagine we start in the parental generation with purebred, let's say purebred tall, uh, green seed plants. We're going to cross those with purebred short yellow seed plants. If we look at our steps to solve genetics problems, the first step is to determine dominant and recessive. We already have that. We uh, learned that from uh, crosses that have been done before. And step two, we've already written a key. So the next step would be to write the genotypes of the parents. So for the first parent, we're going to write big T, big T, little y, little y. And for the next parent, little t, little t, big Y, big Y. The next step is to write the genotypes of all possible gametes. And so looking at the first parent, the only possible kind of gamete it can make would be a big T, little y. The second parent, the only possible gamete would be a little t, big y. So there's only one possible kind of offspring. If we recombine the t's together, big T, little t, big y, little y. Notice that the uh, law of segregation, Mendel's first law, allows us to separate the alleles into different uh, gametes and then recombine them during fertilization. Now if we take two of these F1 offspring and cross these t uh, double heterozygotes together, we can determine what we'll get for the F2 offspring. Now again, take a look at our steps to solve a genetics problem. We've already determined dominant and recessive, we've written a key, we have the genotypes of our new parents, the F1 parents, and we now need to write the genotypes of all the possible gametes. Possible gametes for for parent number one, let's say that's the female, so the types of eggs that she can make, big T, big Y, big T, little Y, little T, big Y, and little T, little Y. And the second parent, the male, can make only the same four kinds of sperm. So we have a box with 16 squares in it. That'll be a 4x4 four four matrix. And now we're ready for the last step, write the genotypes of all possible offspring. Again, we recombine the, the gametes, all possible combinations. First one would be big T, big T, big Y, big Y, as we recombine the, the alleles for the separate genes. The height genes come back together, and the color genes come back together. Second one would be big T, big T, big Y, little Y. Now if we examine each of these type of offspring, we can determine the phenotypes. There's four possible phenotypes. Tall yellow, tall green, short yellow, and short green. Let's uh, go through and tally up how many of each kind we have. So if we look at our phenotype ratio, we have a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. This may seem like a, a long process. Let's take a look at another uh, cross involving three traits at a time. Uh, in this example, this would be a tri-hybrid cross. We've got three traits at the same time, tall, green, and purple, which, of course, people would be interested in. Sort of like uh, you just don't want to know if uh, your future husband might be tall. You may want to know if he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. So uh, people are always interested in more than one trait at a time. Mendel worked with this as well. Let's say, for example, that uh, we're crossing a tall, green, uh, seeded plant with purple flowers. Uh, they're purplish pink. With a short, uh, yellow seeded plant with white flowers. And I put in the key uh, that purple is dominant over white. How would we approach this problem? Well, again, if we take a look at our steps to solve a genetics problem, we already have step one, determine what's dominant and recessive. We've already written a key, so let's write the genotypes of the parents. First parent would be big T, big T, little y, little y, big P, big P. And the second parent, little t, little t, big Y, big Y, little p, little p. We can uh, easily see that the, all of their F1 offspring are going to be big T, little t, big Y, little y, big P, little p. And we can uh, cross two of those. Now this would be a, an awful big box. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, how many squares would be in it? It's 64 squares. This is getting ugly. So let me show you a shortcut. If we realize, as Mendel did, that the height of the plant doesn't have anything to do with the color of the seeds or the color of the flowers, and that the seed color doesn't have any influence on the flower color, in other words, each trait is separate and independently determined, then we can use Mendel's second law, his law of independent assortment, which says since traits don't affect each other, let's imagine treating each trait separately. So for example, let's just worry about the height. 
If that's our concern, then our, our problem really becomes big T, little t crossed with another big T, little t. And that's an easy solution. We have three tall to one short. Now if we're just concerned about the seed color, then let's ignore the height and the flower color and our problem becomes, and again, we have the same familiar three to one ratio, three yellow to one green. And I'm sure you can see that uh, the flower color would follow the same pattern. We'd get three purple to one short. So if we really want to know, let's say for example, what is the probability of getting a short plant with green seeds and purple flowers if we bred these two parents, we can write each separate probability and then multiply the individual probabilities together. So the probability of, of breeding two heterozygote plants together and getting a short plant would be one-fourth. Probability of, of two heterozygote parents producing a green seed plant would be, again, one-fourth. And the probability of them producing a purple flowered plant would be three-fourths. So the probability of all together getting a short, green, and purple flowered plant, we multiply the separate probabilities together. We have one times one times three is three. And four times four is 16 times four is 64. Three sixty-fourths. This is a very fast way. We can do multiple traits at the same time and find out how many, what's our probability of getting uh, certain types of offspring. This is the power of Mendel's second law, the law of independent assortment. And of course this law works for any Mendelian trait unless under two conditions. The traits are located with genes on the same chromosome. Those are called linked genes or if crossing over has occurred between linked genes, then you see patterns that wouldn't follow Mendel's law of independent assortment. And that's how you solve uh, dihybrid and multi-hybrid crosses of genetics.